What's up everyone, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. We're back today with the TrackMan Golf Simulator. Specifically, we're using the TrackMan IO in this case, but this will also be for a TrackMan 4 unit because we're talking about the new TPS 10.1 update along with the new AI motion analysis release. So I'm actually going to be demonstrating for the first time TrackMan's new USB cameras. This is a lower price point that's available for 120 FPS camera. It's a global shutter. It has some really nice quality options and it works with that new AI motion analysis. So there's actually new data points inside AI motion analysis. It's really cool. We're going to talk about setup and lighting, best practices, you know, how actually to set them up and calibrate along with other settings that you can mess with. There's a lot to this video, so stay tuned for the whole thing. Real quick, I just wanted to talk about the camera itself. We can actually put a picture of that camera up on the screen for you guys. You can see very small form factor um, and easy to, you know, mount or use. So I have the mine actually set up probably a little too close. I'm in a constrained area, but but it works just fine. It's just over seven feet behind my hitting area. And then the other one's about eight feet to the ball. All right, so that's where these are set up. I like to actually have my camera in line with my hands. And then I like to have the camera kind of square on with my hands. Everyone's a little bit different. You can mess with this and change it and you know, whatever's gonna work best in your space. Now it does have included cables that are one short one for updates if that's necessary, but also a five meter cable that is going to be, you know, roughly 15 feet or so, um, which is work fine for me. So I can actually have both cameras coming from my computer and 15 feet was plenty. I actually had access to deal with, but you can buy these extension cables. Uh, one's a 10 meter and one's a 15 meter. I mean, these are super long. Um, they are a boosted cable. I wouldn't recommend using them unless you need them. Anytime you just have more cable to deal with, more resistance, things like that. Um, it's just easier to use those included cables if you can. All right. So let's get first to start off with a swing. All right. I, I just want to take a very simple swing. I think I, what did I grab? An eight iron here? Um, because, you know, a, a mid iron club, if, if someone was doing, um, you know, a fitting or lesson or something like that, a good example. Um, also some club speed. So you can kind of get an idea of you know, what the club, uh, you know, freezing ability is on the camera and the adjustments that affect it. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. All right. Swing really doesn't matter. I think I pushed that a little bit, but it'll actually get kind of cool watching the push. So first thing first that I want to show you guys is all of the information that's going to come up on the screen. I mean, it is information overload. All right. Now check this out. You can even see what was happening there on that ball pushing from my target line, all right? Um, you can see angle of attack, and then you can see all those overlays, which is, like I said, just an incredible amount of things going on with the AI motion analysis. So why are my cameras different? I, I wanna start with talking about setup. So my left camera is actually set up for more of a picture quality setting. So if we were actually to go through this, and I can actually take off the motion analysis just for a second, I just wanted to kind of overload you guys in the beginning, and then we can kind of add you know one or two at a time just to show you. So this is more of a quality image, all right, that's 120 FPS, but it's using a much higher exposure setting, which actually lowers the shutter speed, and so you're going to get more club blur. But if you're actually looking to work on the body, you know, you're an instructor that's trying to work on form, you really wanna maximize, you know, that AI motion analysis, this is a great setting for you. Where over here on the right-hand side, you'll see that it's a much darker image, and that's because we've actually lowered the expo uh, exposure on the camera, and that's raised the shutter speed, and you're getting a much more frozen club, even at impact, that club is frozen. You can see how open that face was when I hit that. Um, you know, that's what I get for not warming up and getting ready for this video. It wasn't about the swing though. It was actually a good example of how you can see the ball push. And I love that you have, you know, the face angle and the club path and then that launch of the ball. Um, it's just so cool being able to see all of that. So I know exactly what was going on you know, between that club path, you know, in to out and an open face, there goes that ball launching to the right. All right, now let's go under the camera settings really quick. I wanna talk about first calibration. So you are actually going to go through a process where you set down uh, your ball in a place on the lower left of the hitting zone, 
uh, lower right of the hitting zone, upper right, and then upper left. And it actually locks in for every one. The ball needs to be in the view of both cameras uh, to, in order for it to calibrate. Now, if you're only using one camera, that's fine. It just needs to be in the view of the one camera, or if maybe you're three or four, vice versa, all those type of things. But that's how you're going to calibrate it. And that is how it's coming up with all of these lines where the ball's taking off from, all right? The target, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be able to properly produce those lines based on that. Now I did this awfully quick. I think that I could make little camera adjustments um, and make sure my calibration was perfect, that my face on camera, you know, might be on just a little bit of an angle so I, I could adjust that a little bit. But for how quick I set this up, it's, it's working really well. Now let's talk about the differences in the settings themselves. Now in this case, I'm actually using standard set settings from TrackMan. All right, now if I wanted to, instead of that normal club analysis, I could go to custom and I could actually crank up the gain. So if I wanted my image to be brighter and just more grainy, we can actually do that. So someone might wanna see more and it's still going to allow you to freeze the image. So I'll take one more swing for you guys just to kind of show you what that looks like. It was a little better swing. Didn't push the ball as much, got the face released. So look how much brighter that image is now on the right. It's more grainy, but I'm okay with that. So if you wanna make custom setting changes, you can do that, all right? So I wanted to make sure everyone was well aware that there's full adjustability, not just the default settings. Um, and then of course, there are other things. If I wanted to do you know, that quality image on both sides, I can do that. That's that 120 FPS setting. Um, and there's camera default and auto adjust. I really wouldn't mess with those. These are your two main settings that I would adjust from from there. If you wanted to take the 120 FPS setting, let's go back to club analysis here. That's the standard club analysis. But let's say that on this image over here, I wanted to maybe freeze the club just a little bit more. So I'm actually going to go to custom and I'm just going to adjust the exposure from 1, 128 a second down to maybe like 1, 500. And then I could raise the gain up maybe just a little bit. And you'll see I'm still getting pretty darn good quality. And then the only thing that you're gonna get is, is just a little better of a frozen image. So I would suggest everyone plays with these settings and see what they like the best. Um, I love that they have very simple you know, uh, defaults for everybody to use. Um, it doesn't get more simple than that, but let's move on to this wild motion analysis. So I have it set to auto analyze. So depending on what you're selecting, it's going to auto analyze your swing. All right, now you can select one or all. So I'm just gonna deselect and go through these really quick. So um, you have your shoulder line, that's available on both. You have your lead arm line, all right? And you can see lead arm line, where is, there it is right there, perfect. Um, is on both. And then you have hip line, that's a cool one. Hand trail, club head trail, club shaft. Look how good it does on shaft. Look at that shaft there, and then look at the shaft. I mean, it's just really cool. Club shaft trail, head circle, shoulder line, hip line, club shaft, these are all static because you have dynamic and then static. Shaft plane, shoulder plane, I like that one. Backside line, see if how much you move. So like if you were, you know, swaying forward and back, let's just go ahead and uh, drag that really quick, see how much I move. Isn't that cool how you can just get those static lines on there? I love that. Elbow plane, all right? so. That is your full settings for AI motion analysis. And I'll actually just let this play all the way through. I do like this. I don't think they had all of these before. Notice these little markers. This is your address. This is your, see if it's, I can get it to name that off again. Uh, that's your mid back swing. Go back over this one. That's your takeaway. This one is your top of the swing. This one is downswing. This one is pre-impact. This one is impact, which isn't always going to be the same on both cameras. And you can actually see the little bit of club blur on the down the line, even though I'm getting that very crisp image. 
And then you're going to see, I'm sorry, I went too far ahead. You're going to see release. So you actually see the hands post impact. And then it should be follow through. Yep, follow through. And then we'll let this play through really quick for you guys, just so you can see all of that wild data all in action. Now, if you wanted to, while you were doing all of this, let's say you were a coach or you were a student, I could actually be using the screencast feature down in the lower right there and recording and talking over this and then sending it off. Um, you could adjust your data points down here. So if you wanted to go to settings and adjust your data points, you're going to see that. You'll actually see that I do have attack angle right now. I know that a lot of people are, are waiting for attack angle. Um, this is a beta release of attack angle. I can tell you that I'm very impressed so far and I can appreciate that TrackMan is you know, holding back and making sure they get everything the best they possibly can. Um, but I'm very impressed with uh, what I see from attack angle so far. So this is all the data from the TrackMan IO, all the data from the two USB cameras and the AI motion analysis, all packed into the TPS 10.1 shot analysis module. All right, so if you guys have any questions, I could do maybe a more in-depth shot analysis uh, overview with you guys. Um, you can do swing comparisons. You can load professional swings and put them side by side. You can actually go full screen with one if you want to. You can actually show your tracer so that you can see how I released that face and ended up getting a draw on that. You can look at your dispersion, how I pushed my first one and then brought the other one back to the center line, a side top view, back to video, your club delivery actually made decent impact on that. Um, numbers, table, impact, really cool seeing that the data, you know, let alone looking at the video of what's going on, your swing plane, and then also impact location. So it's, it's just so much inside of shot analysis. Keep in mind on the TrackMan IO, shot analysis is a module inside of TPS that is for your complete version. So if you do have the home version, um, this shot analysis is not included, you would need that. And uh, keep in mind, you also have that Tracy feature that's uh, actually packed in here. Um, there's just so much inside of shot analysis, so much capability and powerful tools. You can go through and you can do different clubs. You can tag them all under a user, um, send them off to the cloud, actually send off a report to someone. If you wanted to go down here in the lower right and actually export um, just a single club swing, it's actually going to pump out this report for you that you can then send off, you could you could print it if you wanted to, I don't know why you do that, but you can hit share, and then it's going to set, you know, let you put in an email and send that off. So, um, you know, these are just a few of the many features. Yes, there are many. Uh, you can make these cameras go live, by the way. If that's something that you wanted to do, I'll just show that really quick. I can actually wrap my video up right here live using the USB cameras inside of TrackMan. So a little delay, you know, as they're buffering. Gotta remember these cameras, the way this works is they're constantly recording like a cycle of seconds. And then when it gets impact, it uses so many seconds before and then so many seconds after. So that's why sometimes you might see just a little bit of lag there, but that's because it's actually doing a constant buffering recording. That's how that works if you're interested. So I wanna hear what you guys think. This is a first look video of TPS 10.1 with the new AI motion analysis updates and then also TrackMan's new USB camera. So let me know in the comments down below. And as always, stay tuned. There'll be a lot more coming soon.